thanks for joining us on this one. This one should be really fun. It's all about video, the basics, and we get into some pretty good details, which I love. And today I've got Jeff Fitzer with me, who you know. He's part of our whole crew here in Lab Code Agents. And we've got Nick, but Nick, I'm not going to say your last name. Can you please do that for me? It's Kneehaus. Yeah. Yes. I would have totally messed that one. It up. does, yeah. Everybody gets it around. German, you know, good old German last name. Right. <laughs> so Nick Kneehaus, and he's the founder of Business Video School, which we'll talk a little bit about here. But let's let's get right into it, guys. First, thanks for being on. Appreciate this. This is being also played into Facebook, into our Lab Code Agents group as well. So if you're listening in on that end, just let us know what city and state you're from. And guys, let's get right into the video thing. First, Tristan, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about who you are. Tristan, let me let me it. chime in real quick, if you don't mind, Tristan. First sure. of all, thank you for taking the intro. Usually you pass that on to me. So this was a, this is a little <laughs> reverse role reversal I here. I, I like it. And I wanted to say to, to everybody who's on today, I think a lot of you have probably already seen the, the video tips we've been giving out. Today is actually the last of the social ones that we've been posting to Lab Code Agents. Uh, but we're going to talk, talk more about that. As you know, Tristan and I have, are partnering with Nick here to do this and bring this to the, to the real estate world. And uh, so for those of you on today, those of you watching this, this is, this is the first time we've introduced this to the world. So you are, you are the, the, initial, the initial ones who get to, get to taste this. And uh, I say that because early adopters Wait, yeah. on video. What, what does it taste like? Uh, it tastes <laughs> like, have you ever um, you know, licked a uh, flagpole? <laughs> oh, dude, that's terrible. I thought you were going to say it tastes like candy. You, you put me on the spot and I immediately started thinking about a Christmas movie. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, you're, early, you're going to be the early adopters. So we encourage everyone to obviously learn from this, take from this. We all, you've been hearing it for the last few weeks. Uh, this, is, this is an opportunity to get some formal education on video. And we're going to give you a taste of that today. So Nick, tell us about yes. yourself and take it away, my friend. Of course. Well, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for having me on today. This is a lot of fun. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So um, just to give you some background on myself, um, I'm also from St. Louis here with Jeff, and I started a business, Connect Marketing, uh, over six years ago at this point. For about the past three, we have been completely focused on video marketing for real estate agents, kind of the personal branding side. So we don't even shoot the houses. We don't even touch that part of it. Um, everything we do has an agent on camera. And so uh, for that three years, we've worked with a couple hundred agents, and basically realize that learning to be comfortable being on camera, learning to use video in your business is extremely complex. There are so many steps to it. There are so many different tools to learn. There's so many different skills uh, to develop. I mean, there's just so much to it. And so about six months ago or so, uh, we really started to dig in and we started, we actually looked at people like Jeff and we said, okay, we've got these folks who have been doing video for years and they're getting really good at it and they're getting, you know, they're getting a following growing and they've blown, it's, their business has taken off. Where did they start though? You know, so it's, it's not, it, it's easy to see that guy four years in and say, oh, I want to go make a video like that because Jeff's really good at it now. But what's more important is to figure out how did you get there, right? So we did a lot of research and we started to dig into, you know, where do you need to start? What are the first couple steps you take? Um, and what we found is that most people were way over complicating it, right? They're going out and they're buying equipment and they're trying, you know, they're talking about editing and I'm like, look, just get your phone out and make a video. You don't, you don't have to make it complicated, right? So that's kind of how we got to this point. So we, we put together business video school. Um, today, we've got some awesome tips and tricks on how to use video in your business, especially during, during kind of the crisis period that we're in right now, uh, which means we all have more time to be doing this kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, we launched, you know, the school was, they were kind of officially launching today. We've done some beta testing already with a few small groups. People are loving it. Um, they're getting a lot out of it. So a lot of what we're seeing today is stuff that's already been kind of battle tested, so to speak, um, from the school. So yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're doing. So awesome, buddy. pull up the slides. Let's, well, let's jump get, in. Ready for it. get some slides going. Cause I saw some of these slides and I'm really excited for what you guys have to share here. All right. Well, let's do it. So in, ca in case anybody wonders what I'm doing in the background here, I'm sitting here with my own phone camera, setting up my camera, shooting different angles of this today to create other kinds of content. Just uh, just wanted to let you know that I'm not just uh, ADD. Right, document, don't create, right? That's right. I'm gonna That's go right. with your ADD. Well, it's that mm -hmm. got something to do with it, maybe. Yeah, I think they're not, they're, they're separate things, you know. <laughs> All right, cool, let's get into it. So 
Um, all right. Well, here's what we want to do today. I think, you know, I want to, I want to make sure we give tons of value, right? I want to focus a lot on just the actual applicable steps. That's, that's kind of my big thing is stuff you can take and then apply directly to your business right away. But uh, before we get into that, I think it's always important to kind of reiterate why video is so important. And I think in the past three weeks, we've all kind of accepted that video is here to stay. We're doing stuff like this. I think almost everybody I talk to has done some form of Zoom. Uh, my mom's a teacher. She's teaching through Zoom right now. Uh, so I think we're all realizing video really is an important form of communication. But even before that, even before the past three weeks, I mean, this was already taking over. I think that um, if you look at video as a style of communication and you compare it to the other things you can be doing, like talking on the phone, sending emails, text messages, whatever it is, the amount of information somebody's going to retain from watching a video um, and the relationship they're going to build with you from seeing you on camera is substantially different than anything else, right? So the first thing that sticks out to me is just the, the retention of information. So it's been found that people retain about 95% of information that they see through video versus only 10% when reading it, right? So I think right now people think about video as a marketing tool, and it, it certainly is a marketing tool, but it's a bigger tool than that. It's a communication tool. And if you, you know, think about like, so you could send an email to someone and they're gonna remember 10% of it. And you send the same thing as a video and they're gonna remember almost all of it, right? So right off the bat, we're getting just so much, so much more information shared. Um, it's also a much better emotional communication tool. I'm sure everybody's seen the, the research that was done you know, 30 years ago that showed that you know, the words that we say are only a, they're a small fraction of the total communication that's happening. You know, our facial expressions, our body language, our tone of voice, those are all components of our communication. And so when you see a video, you see all of that, right? So there's no misunderstanding what somebody is talking about. And we see this, the, we see the impact this has um, with celebrities, right? So celebrities, they have what we call parasocial relationships with us. And so to, you know, not to get too technical, there won't be too many fancy terms here today, but parasocial relationship just means it's a one-sided relationship. So it means that one person is a huge fan or big supporter of someone else, and that person does not know the other person, right? So think of celebrities. And so that to me is what's so cool about this is that as we're communicating more through video, especially on the marketing side, if we're putting out videos on social media and places like that, as people see this stuff, they're getting to know us. They're actually building a relationship with us and our subconscious brains cannot tell the difference. So, you know, we may logically realize when we watch a video that we're not having a conversation with that person, but the rest of our brain actually thinks that we are because we didn't evolve with video. We didn't evolve with TV screens. So all we know when we see somebody's face and hear their voice talking is that they're sitting there in front of us talking to us. And so that's the impact that this stuff is having. So if you look at, at business owners and agents and you know, people across these industries that are using video, they have some incredible things happening. I'm like Jeff, I'm sure can attest to this. You, know, you walk into a room and people you've never met in your entire life come up and start talking to you like they're one of your best friends because they've been following you for like six months or a year, right? So that's what's really cool about this stuff is the, is the degree to which you can build, you can build relationships. And then the, the addition to that is that it's scalable. So we talk about scalability in business all the time. You can, you can make a video that one person sees, and then for basically the same amount of work, maybe a little bit of extra work for distribution, you could have 10 or 100 or 1,000 plus people see that same video, but you only had to make it one time. So I think that's another component of this that you know, I like to really drill in on is like, this is incredibly scalable. I mean, you're going to basically multiply your effort um, every single time you're using video in your business. Love it. Okay. Love it. So moving from there. That was three weeks ago or four or five weeks ago, or wherever we're at kind of in the timeline here. Then everything that just happened, you know, with, with COVID-19 popped up and it completely changed how we were doing things. But in the, in the front of communication and video, all it did is accelerate things. You know, I've actually think, I think it's pretty fascinating that a company like Zoom or Facebook for that matter was able to handle this explosion. And I know there's been some glitches, but think about how many more people started communicating through video in just the past like four weeks. I mean, it's, it's a remarkable number. I mean, it's probably doubled or tripled what it was even before that. And so here, here's just one number that blows my mind is that we already spent a ton of time on Facebook. Facebook's traffic is up 50% or so just in the past month because well, that's how much more time we're spending on social media, right? So Nick, we're talking to Facebook on Wednesday 
in lab coat agents. Oh yeah. So and then they're going to go over some numbers so we can see how how much they've grown. Also, they're going to be talking about approaches as well. So I, I'm glad that you brought that number up. Yeah, and, and you'll have to confirm with them if that's accurate. I found that in an article. I don't. I'm not friends with the people at Facebook personally. No, yeah, it's it's pretty yeah. accurate. It's slightly higher, but it's good that it's 50 percent or more, which is beautiful. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's wild to think we're spending even that much more time on on these platforms because I think you know the average person was spending quite a bit of time there already, um, and so that that's where kind of the next thing I want to talk about today, which is, you know, if you're the kind of person that was reluctant to start using video to communicate and you're still dragging your feet. Maybe you've never made any videos or maybe you've only made a couple, but you've been kind of reluctant to share them. You got to keep an eye on human behavior. Um, we were already seeing the shift happen. People were already starting to expect to see video content from business owners and especially in the real estate industry. But I think that the past month has accelerated that by like two to three years. I and mean, then that sounds like a lot, but I mean, this is completely changing the way that we do business. And I don't think it's going to go back to the old way completely when it ends, right? So one of the things I wanted to, to talk about here is the difference between these two groups of real estate agents, right? Now you've got the large majority of agents who still almost exclusively use networking, um, sphere of influence marketing, right? I mean, they try to stay in, they stay top of mind by getting coffee with people, going to B&I meetings, you know, going to your kid's soccer game and chatting with the other parents, all that kind of stuff. And then you had this smaller group of agents who had started to transition more towards video because they recognized things like the ability to build parasocial relationships and the scalability and all that stuff that comes with it. And now everybody who was focused on networking just got decimated, right? I mean, it's not completely gone. You can still do Zoom meetings. You can still, you know, comment and talk on Facebook or phone calls and you should be doing that. But now 50 people are all sitting at home spending 50% more time on a platform like Facebook they are watching videos and they're either seeing you and you're staying top of mind with them or they're seeing one of your competitors because it's unavoidable, right? I mean, all of our spheres of influence have overlap with other agents. And so if you have an agent in your area that's putting out video content and it, it doesn't matter what it is, right? It could be, maybe they're trying to be funny. Maybe they're trying to keep people informed during the crisis. Maybe they're trying to promote other businesses um, to support the companies that are, that are, you know, saw their revenue completely cut off, right? whatever it is, they're showing up, your sphere of influence is seeing those people. And you have to be asking yourself, what am I doing to compete with that? You know, what am I doing to stay top of mind? So I like this comparison because the truth is making video content is networking. I mean, I know on our graph here, we've kind of got these two as overlapping, but if you think about the ability to build parasocial relationships with people at scale, it's, it is just another form of networking. It's just a little bit more one-sided. And when you get into something like live video, it even takes it that step further. And now it's not one-sided. Now it's literally two-sided. Um, you know, I saw my, this is just kind of a ra weird random example, but my cousin um, is a rapper and he turned 30 the other day and he did a, a live Facebook live concert. Um, and he had 130 people watching this live concert he's doing from his house. And they're all, they're all commenting and engaging and he's calling out their names and like, it was almost more fun than a real in-person concert, to be honest. So, you know, that, that, that kind of next step here, I think, is, is really cool is that as, we, as video continues to evolve, it's no longer a one-sided thing. It's becoming two-sided, which means in a lot of ways, as we see with a Zoom meeting, it's, it's completely replacing in-person communication. Hey, Nick, can I add something too? a couple of, uh, of course. You, you keep mentioning Facebook and, and obviously we're on Facebook right now. So it's the most logical, but like Jim Martell just said, and you know, he got locked out of Facebook. And the reason I bring that up is because a, that does happen, but B it's not just Facebook. It's also right. Instagram. It's also, it's also LinkedIn. It's also TikTok. It's also YouTube. And so for those of you who are going to integrate video into your business, don't just focus on one platform, get into multiple platforms because exactly what happened to Jim now, if he was all in on Facebook, yeah, he's basically dead in the water. He comes to a complete right. screeching halt. However, if Jim's on other platforms, he can just go 3X on the other ones. And Jim, that's what I would recommend you doing is just going hard until Facebook turns you back on because they will. And that way you're going to grow your, your influence on those other platforms because frankly, those other platforms are... <laughs> Make, are, are probably the future anyway, uh, some of the ones I mentioned, even more so than Facebook. Uh, but that's not, right. that, you know, obviously that's not the, the point of this, of this is just about video, but I wanted to bring, bring that up. No, it's a great point. I think, uh, I think everybody has to remember these are all owned audiences. They're not your audiences, right? So face, you know, they, they can cut you off at any point. 
Um, so to follow up on that, I mean, I would also really encourage you to try to build email lists and use a tool like something like BombBomb to send your videos out that way, because then that is an owned audience, right? Nobody's ever gonna be able to take those email addresses away from you. So you do have to balance that. Um, and then one other point on that front is, you know, I talk about Facebook a lot because that's where people are most comfortable spending time with most of the agents we worked with. So keep that in mind too, is that yes, you probably wanna be on multiple platforms, you wanna diversify, but don't go out and try to get on platforms you're not used to using, right? So people ask me all the time, like, oh, should I be doing this on Twitter? And I'm like, well, if you're a power Twitter user, then yes, otherwise don't, because you don't wanna create a scenario where people are responding to you and you're not engaging with them, right? Because engagement's obviously super important. All right, so for those of you that are on here, you know, I wanted to reiterate first just kind of why this is so important, but now we're gonna get into just a ton of value. I mean, this is basically meant to be um, sort of a sample of some of the stuff you would learn in business video school. Um, but the first thing I wanted to reiterate here is that if you're getting started with video, especially for the first time, but even if you've made a few videos and you're kind of looking to improve your skills and continue moving forward, number one is please, please, please start simple, okay? I cannot tell you how many people I have met over the past few years of working on this that have told me that they bought a bunch of equipment. We're talking sometimes thousands of dollars worth of stuff. They set it up in their basement. They've got this little studio and they've never made a video. And that was like over the past two years, they've been buying stuff, right? I, th I think that a lot of us, we, we procrastinate by thinking about other tools, things we need to learn, research that we need to do. And all of that is procrastination because literally you've got one of these, you've got a phone, it's got multiple HD cameras in it. And I mean, this, like our phones nowadays are probably better than a camcorder was 10 years ago, you know? So th these are nice cameras, right? We just need to hold it up and make a video. So that's the first thing, cause I'm gonna show you some, some equipment you can consider investing in. I'm gonna show you some more advanced techniques during this presentation. But if you've not done much video before, please start simple, start with just the phone. Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about the polish and then work your way up from there. Nick, I'm going to add something right here. Um, so for those of you who have questions, you can go ahead and ask them. Uh, mm -hmm. Just please use the Q and a box. This way Jeff and myself can field those questions as Nick presents. Cool. And then any Anything, so you can raise your hands too, but you know, they're gonna be a lot of raised hands. We have 700 people just on the webinar portion. So the Q&A will just help us be able to answer those a lot better. And then we're about to get into some of the good stuff. A couple right. of questions is, just so I can answer them right now, how are we playing this into Facebook right now? Uh, it's, we're using Zoom and I'll send you a link on the chat box so you can take a look at how we did that. It's super easy. Just go in and take a look at it. It's a video that I did. Uh, I've answered that question eight times in the last two minutes. So I thought I would share that really quick. And this is being cool. recorded for sure. A hundred percent. We'll have that on our Facebook business page. And then we'll also replay it by email as well to all of you. So thank you. Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Cool. Good stuff. No, yeah, no problem. I appreciate that. Um, and then the second part on this slide here is you know, so if you start, you start simple. And the second thing is you have to practice. I think a lot of people right now, they see somebody like Jeff and they see the quality and the, and the, the uh, you know, just really awesome content that he's putting out. And they think, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. And the truth is Jeff's been doing this for what, Jeff, like three and a half, four years at this point. It's been, it's been quite a while. Almost five years. Yeah. Almost five. Okay. Right. So, you know, the la it's like, you, that, that would be like going to you know, a professional sporting event and being like, yeah, I want to play basketball like LeBron, you know, that's, he's pretty good. I'm just going to go do that. Right. It, no one ever say that because they know that that took many, many years of practice to get to that point. And yet within business, a lot of times we do do that. We look at something that someone else is doing and we go, yeah, I, I'll go do that. It's no big deal. So start simple and then practice with peers who are at the same place in the learning process that you are. I mean, that's why school is designed that way, right? We don't put, you know, first grade level students with fourth graders and try to teach them the same stuff because it doesn't work very well. So you want to make sure you're working at the same pace and with people that are at the same approximate, at least experience level. Um, you're going to have people that you're not going to be embarrassed to share stuff with, right? So if you've got one of these really basic videos, but you're still feeling weird about it, it's much better to share it with somebody who's also at that point because you're going to be very comfortable with that. Um, and then you're also going to be held accountable. I can't stress that enough right now. Even I need to be held accountable. I mean, I, I feel like um, if I wasn't being challenged by, you know, people like Jeff and Tristan and seeing what they're doing and then, you know, kind of going back and forth and 
trying to come up with creative ideas, like I wouldn't be putting out as much content. So it's really important to practice and do so with your peers. So, all right, let's get into the uh, the meat and potatoes, so to speak, all the, all the value here. So there's two things right off the bat that are going to improve the quality of your video, right? And those are the way you handle your lighting and the way you handle your sound. And this is the kind of stuff that, Again, I wouldn't worry about it on the very first video you make with your phone. It's not going to be a big deal then. But once you've done a few, there are some really, really simple things you can do that will drastically improve the quality of your video. So I don't know how many of you saw Jeff's lighting example video, but he did a cool, cool demo where he was facing uh, different directions in the same room with the same light source. And it's crazy to look at the difference between when the light was in front of him versus when the light was behind him, right? So that would be the first thing you really wanna think about is where is the light source, right? So if you're using um, one of the best sources of light is just a window, you don't necessarily want the sun shining directly in on you because that can be too bright, but just, just open windows, right? As long as you have the blinds open, just the ambient light that's kind of radiating into the room is usually really good light. It's natural light, right? So the key is put your camera between you and the source of light. So if you're seeing my video right now, like I have my camera right there, obviously, and then right behind it, I have this really big light um, that's typically in our video studio and we brought it home um, while we're not allowed to go to work. Um, and so it's, it's almost directly behind the camera. So that's kind of where you want your light coming from. The one kind of the worst kind of light you can have is, is traditional overhead lighting. So if you're in an office and you have like that fluorescent overhead lighting, it's really bad for videos because what it does is it creates shadows that cast down your face. So like you get the raccoon eyes effect, um, any wrinkles, any defect, you know, anything on your face that you don't want people to notice is gonna be highlighted by that kind of light, right? So that's number one is like complete, if you can avoid overhead light, um, just turn them off and then stand in front of a window and that's gonna give you much better light, right? So just really, really simple stuff you can do there. Um, and then another thing you can do is you can add your own lights, right? So again, don't buy anything until you've made a couple of videos, but a, uh, there's a $16 ring light and it just literally clips onto the top of your phone, right? So basically it clips over and then it, it surrounds the camera on the front of the phone. And that's gonna give you nice um, selfie style light for your videos. So again, that would be something that I would invest in maybe after you've made at least five to 10 videos with just your phone and you can use natural light in the meantime. Okay. Nick, Nick yeah. I, uh, I want to see if I can share really quick, go back to the previous screen mm -hmm. just to see if I can share. I'm going to unshare your screen right now. Sure. Go ahead. Just so that I can show kind of the setup I have Perfect. right now. So people can take a look at how simple it is and it gives, it gives me the ability to to be able to have great lighting okay tell me when you can see my phone got it yeah all right perfect and can you guys see my screen yep mm -hmm. all right so i've got one ring light right there you see that nice and then i have a second one that stands right there yep right. perfect now that gives really good light i have a phone set up right here with a little tripod so that I can record clips as, uh, as I figure I'm gonna talk and grab a few little things, I can throw it on Instagram. And then I have my gimbal right here if I need it, right? And then I have this mic, which we're about to talk about, uh, but this is a Yeti mic and it's right next to me. So the, between these two lights at the angles, it gives really good, really good lighting for the face. So I wanted to share that with you guys, just so you're able to see uh, exactly how how that lighting comes across really well so there's no shade yeah and that's perfect I mean, and then that's kind of taking it i would say even one step further which is awesome so if you do have more than one source of light that kind of arrangement is perfect right just have them off to the sides of the camera slightly and then you get that nice even light on your face um, and we could talk about lighting all day obviously because there's a whole bunch more tips and tricks um but yeah well, I think well, and Nick, if I, can, if I can say too, when it comes to the natural yeah. lighting, just make sure, and I get this all the time, make sure that your computer is set up to where the, compu the back of your computer, like the back of your laptop is facing the light, the, the natural light, so the light's coming in on you. Because if your back is to the light, then you're gonna get like a shadow on your face. And so there's, all you gotta do is just set yourself up correct with the natural light. You don't necessarily need all that lighting, but it's not that expensive. Somebody asked Tristan, you could probably answer, oh, answer how it's, much. Uh, it the, the smaller light on my desk was $15, <laughs> super inexpensive. Right. And the taller light that comes with the tripod was $25. And I do have them at an angle so that 
uh, cause I also wear glasses. So there's no glare. Mm. Right. And at the angle, you don't get that glare or you're going to get those lights right in front of your uh, glasses. So, uh, what's the name of those guys, Nick, can you go, can you start sharing your screen again so people can see yeah. the name of those? Cause mm -hmm. it's the same one you posted up there. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is the selfie ring light um, that goes directly on your phone. So that that's a smaller one. Um, and then yeah, there are and and, and uh, when we're done here, I'll make sure maybe directly in lab code on this post uh, in the group, I can I can link to some of the stuff that we recommend. But it's it's Nick, so cheap. Can you can you uh, for every because I know you're going to put up a text number on here. Uh -huh. Can you once everybody signs up for the newsletter that you send out. Can you also send out links to the products that you use? I'll, I'll send you the sure. link to the ring light that I have and also to the Yeti mic mm -hmm. and to the little tripod that holds my phone so people can then uh, see what we use and how much and, they And we'll, we'll all share because we all use different stuff. So we can all share individually and you guys will have tons of options, tons of choices, and they're all fairly inexpensive options. Yeah, so just awesome. make sure when... When Nick puts up that number here, I'll see if I can put it up here. Text, uh, learn. Yeah, I'm just going to throw that slide up real quick. 244222. Go ahead and just text that number. It'll sign you up or it'll give you a link. Just, just sign up and then we'll send you all that information. This way we don't have to keep on posting it on the chat box and you'll have it to refer back to because the chat box will end right after this ends as well. So. Cool. Uh, guys, just take a picture of this slide so you can do this later or do this right now. I just put that text info in the little chat box. If you can't find the chat box, take a picture of your screen right now with your phone, and then you can go back to refer to that later. Cool. All right, yeah. guys. Um, good, good suggestion. While, while people are doing this, a has a quick question. What editing software is recommended for PC? Asking in case I upload a large file to my PC and want to edit it from there iMovie is not available for regular PC. We usually have Adobe Premiere. Mm -hmm. That's what most PC users use. And you can always use another company um, called, um, oh, geez, now I'm drawing a blank. It's the one Billy uses who edits everything for us. Uh, Camtasia. It's E-A-M-T-A-S-I-A, -A -A, Camtasia. And that one, you can shoot video and edit it. Also ca capture your screen. That one's really, really good to use as well. Now, look, any editing software you use out there is going to require a, a learning curve. So right. you're going to have to invest an hour into whatever you're going to use. But what better time to do it than now? <laughs> so right. make, sure, yeah. make sure, yeah, Rob, Camtasia works with Vista. <laughs> Rob, you need to update. <laughs> and and uh, Kristen, you, you mentioned iMovie training. You know, just as an example, first of all, you could go to YouTube. You could obviously join uh, the, the video school. Uh, we actually put them on locally in our market. So they're out there. You just got to go find them. Right. Okay. Um, a question for Nick. It says uh, the, that link, learn video to 44222. It says lead digit identifier not recognized. Are they putting in too many digits or? Um, you just gotta make sure it's just those, those letters all at, as one word. So learn L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O, just all as one word, yeah. no quotes. So just that word, uh, that, you know, two words combined into one. I know it's a little confusing. Um, oh, that's and that, right. that should Good work. Point. Thank you, Nick. Um, if you're using an Android, sometimes with your Android phone, you have uh, your title, like real estate agent at, uh, it can't have anything else but that text, learn video, and it has right. to be to that specific phone number. So just make sure there is no other text. Everyone says it's coming in now, it's working. So if you're not getting the right thing, you're doing it wrong, just make sure to have that thing only. Thanks, Nick. All right, back to you, Matt. No cool. All right, so talking about audio, um, audio I think it's overlooked even more than lighting, but it, it's really simple to fix. So the first thing you have to remember with audio is the audio is gonna be better the closer you are to the microphone. So you see this happen a lot with uh, videos that are shot with like a tripod. So somebody puts their phone on a tripod and they'll stand several feet away. Um, and all of a sudden the audio is really echoey, right? So especially if you're in, uh, the worst is when you're in a vacant home. So if you're in a, you know, an empty house with wood floors and you stand a couple feet away from your phone, sometimes it's so echoey that you can't hear what the person's saying. So keep that in mind, right? You wanna be in as, as much of a noise-free environment as possible. 
Um, you want to be as close as possible to the microphone. So there is a certain sense of balancing, you know, getting the phone close enough to get good audio, but also not being so close that you're kind of crowding the camera into your face. Um, so what can you do to avoid that? Well, one of the tips that uh, Jeff gave in one of our tip videos we put out was to use your AirPods. So if you have an iPhone, uh, your AirPods obviously have a microphone built into them because you use them for phone calls, right? And that mic is gonna be less than five inches or so from your mouth. So you're automatically gonna get much clearer audio because the microphone's just closer to the, the source so of guys, the sound, right? Um, so there was something that one of our members in Lab Codes brought up, and I didn't know this until they brought it up, but it seems as though the mic from the Apple AirPods don't work when you're going to mm -hmm. record video. And I tested it out. I, I told my daughter to take the iPhone to a different room and I kept the iPod uh, AirPods in my ear mm -hmm. and it didn't hear a single thing. Really? So, Interesting. Yeah. So that, that was really weird to me. Um, so what we did instead is I bought this little mic that, that we're giving out the sure mic. Here, let oh, me, cool. Yeah. Let me, uh, take you off of this so I can share it. Give me one second. It's a little sure mic speaker view. Here we go. And you attach it to to your to your phone and then it kind of leans over like that right you can twist That's it nice yeah. and then i know it works there's a little app that it comes with but that was that, that was new to me man i had no yeah. idea that the airpod mics didn't work until i tested it out i was like mm. whoa so but Love obviously no yeah in, like jeff right now has his headset in if you do that that works right obviously right but yeah. so just heads up on that man no, good call. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an iPhone, I'll admit. So I'm, I'm kind of speaking secondhand on that sense. And I, what I recommend doing um, is to buy a lapel microphone. So yeah, I love, I love that Sure mic. That's awesome. Um, but you can get lapel microphones on Amazon for like $10. I mean, we're talking dirt, yeah. dirt cheap, right? So here are the, here's the lapel mic. Let me go, go and show you guys how this, this also works. You just, it's a wired one, which is not a problem, right? You just unhook it and then you plug it into the end of your iPhone or your phone. And then you just plug this in and it has great, great reception. Uh, it'll record right into it. So you'll, you'll need the adapter to, to, uh, for the iPhone. The oh, dongle. that's right. That's yeah. right. The little, the little, uh, dongle. dongle. Yep. The dongle. Yeah. That's right. Gotta have the dongle. Yep. And yeah, then, so I've got, I've got an Android so I can plug, I still have my audio jack, which I think they're finally getting rid of on the newer models, but it, it is handy when you're making videos to have an audio jack on your phone. That's for sure. The best advice I give Android users every time I speak about video is get an iPhone. That's true. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. I, I keep hearing that. It's, yeah. a, it's a consistent message. <laughs> That's fair though. That's fair though. Um, so yeah, so lapel microphone, I mean, that, that's, that's a great uh, piece of equipment to have in general. Um, should I go ahead and turn these slides back on probably? Yeah, go ahead, man. Sorry, I had to answer those okay. questions. No, you're good. I you're love good. how we're getting interactive here, by the way. No, that's good. See, there you go. Two-way, two-way communication through video, right? Um, so yeah, lapel mics, no brainer. Now, again, do not wait to make your first video because you got to wait a week to get your lapel mic from Amazon. Make a video without it first, right? But that would be of all the equipment you can buy. It, it's literally like there's a whole bunch that are 10 bucks. You can buy, make sure there's one note, make sure you buy the one that's for a phone, not for a traditional camera, because the audio jack is actually slightly different. So you want to make sure you buy a phone lapel microphone, um, but you should be good as long as you get that. But yeah, I mean, it's, you'd be surprised. I mean, for 10 bucks, you would think the audio doesn't get that much better, but just by having that microphone right here on your shirt and getting it that close to your mouth, it really reduces background noise. It makes your voice very clear. Um, it's going to be a noticeable improvement on your videos. So that's that's something we definitely recommend. Uh, I had a question here from the audience. Does the Sure Mic hold on? I have, I still have the one here that we're giving away on uh, that we're giving away on uh, LCA Viral. video, and that was this one, guys. Um, yes, it does cost 150 mm -hmm. bucks, but we are giving it away. In Lab Code Agents or LCA Viral, if you bring in people, when we hit 10,000 people in LCA Viral or 120,000 in Lab Code Agents, we're giving two. We're giving two of these away. But yeah, it's 150 bucks. You can order it, or you can just see if you can win it. But that's the box, guys. Yeah, that is a very nice phone microphone. <laughs> yeah. 
Very fancy, uh, yeah. Back I'm, to I'm, you, hey, I'm looking at one right now, by the way, on uh, Amazon for 26 bucks, and it it comes with the 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 plug is the iPhone plug. It doesn't even oh, have the traditional. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so we'll have to throw some of these links in the uh, in the chat or you know on yeah. the post afterwards. And like like you mentioned, Tristan, if they opt in for the text, we'll make sure they get a list of this stuff. Okay. Perfect. And, and so. Carol, yes. Anybody asking the question, is it being recorded? We are recording this. Cool. All right. So next thing we recommend here, right? Um, so tripods. I think tripods are another kind of no-brainer piece of equipment. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how much your hand is going to shake when you're holding your phone up. So especially the further it gets away from you, the more you hold your arm out, the less stable it's going to be. Um, so just a quick side note, if you are shooting stuff with your phone, I really recommend, you know, kind of keep it close to your body. So if you're doing like a tracking shot where you're trying to get like a room, um, something like that for a home tour video, if you keep your arms locked into your side, it, it significantly reduces how much you're going to shake. So just kind of a quick side note, but a tripod, um, and then the kind of more advanced, if you want to be mobile version, would be a gimbal. Um, I'm not going to recommend you buy a gimbal because they, they are more pricey. But a tripod, I mean, you can get a basic, I think, I think Amazon has an Amazon Basics tripod that's like under 20 bucks. I mean, you can get these for really cheap. Keep in mind. Hey, check, out our, check out our video, Nick. Point that out to them too because I've messed around with tripods. This is my mm -hmm. favorite one that I've gotten recently. It serves, it's got multiple uses. Perfect. Uh, so check out that video. Yeah, so so that's I, I like the one Jeff has. That's a, a simple, cheap one. Um, yeah, can you raise that up so I can stop sharing the screen? I want to see that. So it's uh, it's also got a, a selfie little guy, so you can do you can hold it up, so you can actually use it. This is a good recommendation that I use for people when instead of using if they can't afford a, a, a stabilizer, just mm -hmm. use this instead of holding your microphone because mm -hmm. you can extend it out up to five feet. So ah. you can use it as like a selfie stick, but you can give yourself a little bit more depth on your videos. If you're not using a stabilizer, don't hold your camera when you're shooting videos. That's another one of our tips. Uh, yeah. So always use one of these guys, but it also serves as a tripod as well. I love that. All right. So I have, when I shifted over my camera, I have this little jobby one. So it's really small. It's usually for a table or you can hang it around a tree, right? With this, wrap it around a tree, wrap it around your steering wheel when you're yeah. parked, yeah. not when you're driving. <laughs> yeah, careful. <laughs> uh, and what happens is at the very top of this, you can also add some other jobby things like uh, we can add this little camera, this little uh, light to the side, and then it comes with little accessories on the side. You can also add uh, a mic or anything else. Nice. And then you can switch over uh, you can easily switch this over if I can do it vertical or it vertical or I can do it horizontal, right? And this is the jobby one. It's J-O-B-Y. I, I love this little thing. I've got two and I carry one in my backpack. Yeah, and it's important, by the way, uh, when we're talking about orientation, depending on where you're posting your videos, uh, to which orientation we use, which Nick, I, I don't know if we get into that on this one. I think you do, don't you? You yeah, do. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. If we ever let him talk, he'll get there. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, I, feel, I, I feel like I, uh, okay. I missed the memo about bringing my tripod to the to the <laughs> Zoom. So I, <laughs> I actually, I'm like surrounded in here by tripods, but they're all being used for things. <laughs> so all right, cool. All right. You, all right. So we talked about the tripod. So moving beyond that. Okay. So now we're, we're getting into some some nitty gritty here, which is this is good stuff. So resolution this is something um i think a lot of people don't realize how much control they have over this within their their camera app and their phone so you hear a lot that phones uh, nowadays have 4k cameras in them so um i have an s9 plus which is like three generations old at this point i think um and it has there's at least two two years old actually i think it's two years old um but it's got a 4k camera so everything within the past couple years should probably have a 4k camera you don't always want to record in 4k though so um, I'd be curious if everybody wants to kind of throw in, in the chat, um, how many times, well, for those of you that take a lot of pictures and video, like how often do you fill up your phone? So does that happen to you? Have you ever had your, ever gotten to a point where your phone is completely full? And there's ways to get around that. Like I use Google photos to back up all my video and photos and I just delete them. Um, but one of the things you can do to, to drastically reduce the amount of storage space you need from your video is you can drop the resolution setting. So your phone is capable of all the way up to 4K video, but most people don't realize if you put something on, on somewhere like Facebook um, or Instagram, a lot of times it's not actually being shown at 4K. So even if you upload it in 4K, a lot of it's compressed, it's smaller file si uh, sizes, 
And so you, you, there's no reason to shoot in 4K unless you're doing something that's going to be really high end. Maybe it's going to go on uh, YouTube or it's like a you know home tour where you need every little bit of detail. So in that case, you can go into the settings. Um, if you're on Android, you literally click on the little gear icon, open the settings, and then go to like video settings. Um, if you're in the iPhone, you actually have to go to the settings uh, app. So in the, the main settings for the phone, and you can find your video settings in there. And you can go all the way from 4K all the way down to 480 which is that that's old school. That was before uh, HD TV came out, right? So your old kind of CRT televisions, big bulky things that weighed 50 or 100 pounds, um, those were for 480 uh, P. So you're basically going from there all the way up to 4K. We recommend probably shooting in 1080. So 1080 is your standard uh, HD, um, but the difference is 1080 files are gonna be about one fourth of the size of a 4K file because you're capturing a lot more pixels with a 4K image, right? So just by switching, you can actually record about four times as much video at 1080p versus 4K. So if you have a phone that's filling up really quickly, that's something to check. And then the other, you know, other side of the coin is if you're recording video and it always looks really grainy and you're not getting a lot of detail, you probably also wanna check that because you may have your phone set to a lower quality video and you might be able to bump it up quite a bit. All right. Okay. Well, we're back, back to that slide I showed earlier. So one more time, if you, if you want more of these tips, if you're looking to learn more about video and get some free tips, um, again, text learn video, it's just one word. So L E A R N V I D E O just that in the text to four, four, two, two, two. And then that'll also be the way that you get the equipment list and all the stuff that we've been talking about today. So make sure you do that if you want to receive that. Hey, hey, Nick, I just, I just shared uh, the, and no sort of Tristan, we both just shared links to Amazon for the tripods that we both Perfect. mentioned. So go cool. check those out in the yeah. chat box. Yeah, in the chat box. Nick, can you go back to the other screen really quick? Uh -huh. Just to let people know. Guys, just do me a favor, take a picture of this so you have it for later if you're not able to do it right now or for any reason it's not working for you. Uh, if it's not working, make sure that you don't have anything after the words learn video, make sure it's together. Make sure that it doesn't have your signature as a real estate agent underneath that. And, and then it should be working. It's worked for most of you. So do that. Also, just take a moment right now to give us what you're learning. Say, hey, this is amazing. If you're watching on Facebook, just give it a lot of hearts. Give a lot of a thumbs up. And just give us some love here so Nick can keep on going. I also wanted to show you, if you have an iPhone, I wanted to share with you. Nick, I'm going to take this off really quick. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to share with everybody uh, how to do this on your iPhone because I've got an iPhone. So I'm going to share how to go find the section to increase what you were talking about, the resolution. So right. let's go right into the iPhone. See right there. Uh, I'm going to just tell you where it is. Go to settings. You see right there, that section right there, that's settings. Click on settings. And then you scroll down to the section that has your little camera and you see this section right here. It says camera, right? Click on camera. And then it says record video, record slow-mo. You see right there? Click on it and it gives you all of these options. Now I have it set to 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. I'd recommend going as high as 4K at 30 frames per second. 60 just looks too fake for me, hmm. uh, but 30 does pretty good. Now just realize that as you go to the bottom, you see where it says right there, a minute of video will approximately, and then it'll go into how much space it's going to take up. So it's important that you note that the, the higher the quality, the more space this is going to take up. And if your phone doesn't have a lot of space to start with, you probably want to keep it at 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. So again, really quick, I went to this section on my phone, settings, right? Then I scrolled down to camera, and then you can change it under where it says record video right there and I, you know what i'm going to just go ahead and change it right there so i have it and I, and I think i think it's important to somebody asked the question about which one is recommended you know again if you use 4k it's crisper but it's going to eat the heck out of your bat your battery uh as well uh so 1080 is perfectly adequate uh, for what most of us are doing on video i use it almost exclusively i almost never use 4k and i have two full-time videographers uh and it's good enough for them so yeah, just just kind of an fyi agreed agreed 
All right, guys, yep. let's go. Back to it. All right, so let's see where were we. Okay, I wanted to give everybody a couple ideas for the kinds of videos you can be making right now. So we gave you a bunch of tech tips. Um, just a couple quick ideas. So the, this is not by any means all inclusive. These are not ranked in order of priority or anything. They're just kind of some, some ideas that we had. Uh, I think right now live video is a huge, huge opportunity. I would not go live and talk about your business, right? Um, you can be promotional, that's, that's fine. Uh, Jeff recommends you know, kind of 80-20, so 80% of your content is not about your business or promotional, um, and the 20% is, so that 80% is more kind of personal stuff. One example uh, from one of our students in kind of our beta program um, that I thought was really cool is she knows how to juggle. So she did a live video where she taught people to juggle. So she's standing out in her backyard and she's doing some juggling and talking about the technique and everything. And then she had some people watching that were learning as she was doing it, right? So I think that is a great example of something you can do is just like, what, what are your talents outside of your business, right? What are some things that you like to do um, that you can do on video? Because you can educate, you can entertain, um, and they're things that you're already enjoying. So I think live video is a huge opportunity. Um, I think recording your FAQ videos right now, we've got a lot of downtime. So if you were to go through and think about what are the top 10 questions that your customer typically asks you throughout the, the buying or selling process, if you're a real estate agent, you know, what are those questions? And then take the time to really write down your best thought out answer you could possibly give, right? Because typically you probably answer, you know, kind of haphazardly by text or email, um, or even phone call. So think about like, what's the absolute thorough best answer I can give and then take a, you know, do a couple iterations, record it multiple times until you get it just right. And now whenever somebody asks you that question, they're gonna get a pre-recorded answer. They're gonna get the best answer you've ever given every single time. You don't have to think of it. So you're gonna save a bunch of time every single, every single time you share this video. And then like we said earlier, if you would have responded by email or text, they're gonna retain a lot more information because it's a video instead of email or text because they're getting 95% versus 10%, which is a huge difference, right? So I think FAQs, that's a no brainer right now. Um, and then the final one we wanted to recommend here was if you have access to something like Zoom, um, you can record interviews with local business owners. So what I would do is I would focus on talking to business owners who are getting hit really bad right now by the crisis, right? So people who got their companies completely shut down or you know restaurants that are struggling because they're only doing delivery or takeout right now, um, do an interview with the business owner, buy some gift cards, give them away, try to drive people to purchase gift cards from that business. And what's going to happen is obviously your community is going to appreciate the content. It's, it's hard, you know, good kind of positive stuff, but that business owner is going to really appreciate that. Right. So you do them this little favor now. And when this all kind of, kind of winds down in a few months, they're going to be out there singing your praises because you helped get them through it. Right. So I think those are on Facebook live and zoom oh. here from the audience. So I want to just to interrupt right. you before you go to the next slide. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to zoom guys, a lot of questions as to how we push it into Facebook. I did do a video on it. I'm going to put it into the chat. So just do me a favor, watch that because it's about 18 minutes long. We don't want to get into it here. Right. Uh, do me a favor and subscribe because I will have a part two to that. And also people are asking, well, how long should our Facebook lives be? Uh -huh. Nick, Jeff, any questions? I'll, I'll jump in on that. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to the length of videos, which we did do a video, we did a tip on this as well. Uh, when it comes to live, there is no correct answer. Generally speaking, on Facebook and Instagram, you want to keep your videos a little bit shorter, like less than 60 seconds or maybe up to two minutes. And then, of course, YouTube is a longer form platform, so they actually want longer form videos. But when it comes to doing live videos, it all dep depends on your content. If you have something to share and something to talk about, something authentic or something that's valuable for your audience, it doesn't matter if you talk for 10 minutes. Do what you need to do and then gauge based on the response and the engagement that you get on what works because you might get a ton of response to a 10 minute video versus a one minute video because the content crushed and that's so there really is no exact answer to that to that question uh just play with it just do it more often yep cool all right let's talk about video structure so jeff i know this is one you talk a lot about about you want to you want to take the lead on this slide yes right quick? Yeah. You know, you know what you should never do on your videos, every single video, whether it's personal or business is start it with, Hey guys, or happy Saturday, or it's Jeff here. You've got like three seconds to grab their attention. And if that's what you expect to grab their attention with, 
it's not going to happen because 99 out of 100 others are doing the exact same thing and we have short attention spans and we're scrolling fast. So your hook every single time on your video, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if you're about ready to go live at your kid's ball game, give your audience intrigue to let them know what's about to come so they're more liable to stay. So again, start it with what the video is gonna be about, give it a tease, whatever it might be, start all your videos with a hook every single time and please, no more, hey there, audience. Just don't do that, please. And I know it's hard, but this is why you need to go into your videos planned, pre-planned, maybe not you know, script to a certain extent, but just be mentally prepared. So when you start your video, because we're all nervous when we start a video, to know what your hook's gonna be. Then intro yourself, then tell a story, then have a call to action, assuming it's business related or there's a reason for a call to action. But like I said, Hook even your personal videos, not just your business videos. Hook them all. Great advice. Love it. I'm pretty passionate about that topic. I know, yeah. I figured that was a good one for you to, to take over, right? <laughs> um, okay, a couple more slides, and then we'll, we'll get wrapped up here. Um, we, we brought up video orientation before. Hey, I think hey is... Nick, Nick, real quick. They're, they're asking for a hook example. Uh, okay. So, yeah. like, for, let's, let's use real estate as an example. So, let's just say you're standing in front of a new listing, you're standing in front of an open house. So, instead of saying, hey, guys, or instead of introducing yourself uh, or, or saying happy whatever day it is, you should say, you should see the finished basement in this, this house, or you should see the huge backyard in this new listing that I have, or anything like that. Like, give them something that's going to make them want to stick around a little bit longer to see what it is you're teasing. That's the key. Yeah, or, that, like that's the key, guys. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna interject here and say, okay. when you have a listing, the thing that that kills people's attention the most is when you're saying, "Hey, this is Tristan. I'm at one two three Main Street, and let me show you the inside of the house." Right? That's I mean, come on. We we hear that all the time, and it goes through our Facebook feeds or Instagram feeds. It's just super boring. Instead, come with the point of a story, right? A story always connects us. So start off by saying, hey everyone, I'm here at this property and let me explain to you why the sellers purchased this home 10 years ago and it has to do with a rattlesnake. Let me get right into it. I'm Tristan with Keller Williams Realty and I'm at 123 Main Street and let me go into where this all happened, right? You're telling a story, you're connecting with people. And you know what I would actually do with that is I would get the rattlesnake piece in even sooner than what he did, because the sooner you say that, the sooner I'm going to be like, what, 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 what? I want to hear what's going on here. So get it in there as soon as possible in the very beginning of the video. And one and thing, Nick, that, can you go, can you go back to the hook slide while we're talking? Cause people uh, want to see it. Oh yeah. Go back to the hook slide, buddy, and share that because uh, I, I want to also tell people that it's also important to ask your sellers, Hey, Seller, can you tell me why you purchased this property? What was so important about this home? What you, did you love about this home the most? And when they start telling you why they loved it, the experiences they had here, the stories, that's what you can use to hook people because that's why they loved it, right? So chances are somebody else is going to love it because of that. Right. Just take note of those things on on a, uh, on, a, on a different set of people. Uh, John, rattlesnakes are fine over here in, in uh, Southern California. All the trails have it. It's just part of, part of being with it. Also the beaches and just experiences we've had overall. I mean, my, my dog was freaking attacked by a coyote five days ago. It's Jeez. just part of living here, man. Uh, but some, ex some stories that'll catch people's attention really fast. Uh, just, just giving you some ideas out there. Yep, and then a call to action is, uh, you know, when's it going live? When is the listing going live? When is there an open house? When can they see the house? Uh, anything like that, any kind of call to action that gives them something to actually take action or know that something's coming. Uh, that's, that's how you should end all of your business videos. Yeah, and, and just to add on that, there are a couple of questions as to how long the video should be. Rob, there, there are certain guidelines that you need to follow in regards to length of video, Facebook loves three minutes or longer only because it captures people's attentions that, and it keeps people there a longer time, right? Three minutes, HD, they love that. They'll actually push your video more. The algorithm is set to love your video more if it's three minutes or longer and in HD. And if you're shooting the video live from your business page, you can go then and edit and add captions for free through Facebook. So that, 
Uh, YouTube loves five minutes or longer. That's what they prefer up to about 22, 20 minutes. That's the sweet spot. And then obviously if you're on TikTok, you can only go up to a minute, but it's 15 second increments up to a minute. And then same thing with stories on Instagram. And that's about 15 seconds. You can go longer, but then it cuts them into 15 seconds. If you're shooting video for your Instagram feed, it's 60 seconds or less. This way it can go into your feed. And if you're going into IGTV, definitely don't do over 15 minutes because it'll cut it off at 15 minutes. Uh, did I miss anything, Jeff? In well, there's, to there's a lot of questions that we're not going to be able to get to, and we're going to go over time, so we apologize for that. This is recorded, uh, so you will get to obviously see the recording, and obviously the point of this is to introduce the business school because there is so much to share, and there's so much to learn. You're not going to learn it in one hour, um, and so that's part of the reason why we're doing this, so we apologize if we missed anything, but there's uh, 700 people on this, and not to mention the people on Facebook, so um, we'll try to engage everybody that we possibly can. I just want to throw that in there before people leave. Right. Do we, do we want to jump ahead a little and talk about the school before yeah, we go, go right into the school and then come back? Cause I don't want to lose all these people. Right. So let's, let's jump ahead a little bit. And I just put a opt in as well in the chat, uh, an opt in, uh, for the video school to get the free video tips. So it's, there's a link right there. Go jump on it. That was also, you could get it through the text code as well. Just want to cool. include that. All right. Well, let's talk about the school for a second, because um, that's that's part of why we're here today, right? Is kind of announcing uh, the the opening of the first class here for for Lab Code agents. So, uh, what is Business Video School? So, basically, what we did is we we did all this research to figure out, you know, what is the process that someone should go through to learn each of these things one at a time, so that we're not trying to just dump all of it on you and figure it out as you go. So there's a couple kind of fundamental aspects that we incorporated into the school. Number one is <clears throat> we wanted there to be practice. Um, so this is something I was talking with uh, one of my, my good buddies who's a coach. Um, and he talked about how in his coaching you know, practice, he, he, te he tells people a lot about or talks a lot about the difference between performance and practicing, right? So when you get to the performance part, you want to have practiced as much as possible so that you're confident and comfortable to perform. And a lot of us, I think, tend to skip straight to the performance part. So we, we do the stuff like where we try to copy what Jeff's doing. Um, and we, we have all kinds of problems because Jeff is at the performance level. He's done lots of practicing. So that, that's kind of fundamental to this. So there's a couple of things here. Number one is that we do a different training on a weekly basis. Um, so let me skip to the next slide. So the first is that we have a one and a half hour training every week, right? Um, so we start with the most basic. The first training is literally covers how to use your cell phone to record a video. And we go through a lot of what we talked about today, how to change the resolution settings, how to zoom in and out, how to hit the record button, you know, literally all the, all the most basic steps. And then we kind of get a little bit more advanced over time. And one of the things that's cool about the way we do this is that you're watching this training at the same time as everybody else. So this works very much like traditional school, but you're doing it virtually through a Facebook group. So you're in a class with all of your peers who are going through this process at the exact same time. You're watching this one and a half hour training. And then throughout the training, we have exercises. So we talked about practice being so important. So you're stopping in the training to say, okay, we're, we just showed you how to trim your video, for instance, on your phone. You're now going to take a couple minutes and you're going to go in and you're going to work on the video that we're using as a demonstration and you're going to trim it. So you're going to literally practice that skill. And so we do multiple of those throughout the training. And what's cool is that as you're practicing and you're posting examples of the work you're doing into the Facebook group, your peers can engage with you, right? So they can give you feedback. You can ask questions. Um, in the beta versions of this we've done, everybody's super supportive. So it's very much an encouraging environment. And so we've got these practice sessions. Uh, we got these exercises we're doing. And then we also have Q&A sessions as well. So you're going through the training, you're practicing the skills, you're doing your homework projects. One thing that's cool about the homework projects is that every homework project is actually um, a, a asset that you can use in your business. So we're not just having you do busy work, we're actually having you make things that you don't have to, but if you chose to, you could post to social media, you could put on YouTube, you could send in an email, um, and they're, they're directly usable. So once you're done with the 12 trainings, you're actually gonna have 12 pieces of content or maybe more like 10 because some of the steps are editing existing pieces of content that you can share, right? And then the final part of this is we also have Q&A sessions. So any of your specific questions that you have, you know, you're struggling with a particular setting, you're trying to generate ideas for a video topic, 
you're trying to identify your ideal customer, whatever it might be, you can come into these Q and A sessions, which again are done virtually through the group. You can ask your question and then we take those questions one at a time um, and we answer them on a live video, right? So you're able to get direct coaching from the instructors. Um, I'm primarily the instructor for now. I'm the head trainer. So most of the trainings, um, you're going to have access to me, but you're also going to have access to experts like our full-time videographer. So, you know, our, our videographer who's a part of the program, any sort of, you know, technical questions or tips, he's available. We've got our, uh, you know, my business partner, Vanessa, that we started this all with years ago. She's a graphic designer. She's a branding expert. So you've got that. So you don't just have video um, you know, strategy, you also have, you know, technical stuff you can ask questions about. And so this is all contained within the Facebook group. So the beauty of this is, you know, it's a tight knit community, you're working with your peers, and you're being held accountable. I think that's the final point I want to make um, here before we talk about what else is included. It's just, you know, this, this is the kind of thing where you are going to be held accountable to actually making video. And I can't stress how important that is, because I know so many people that kept telling me that they were going to do this and they just simply didn't. They found plenty of other reasons to procrastinate. And that's the number one thing that we just completely eliminate is we don't, we don't let any of our students procrastinate. They actually have to be applying this stuff to their business. So let me talk about some examples of, of what you would learn. This is just some of the topics. This is not comprehensive. Um, like I said, in the, in the initial part of this, it's a three month process and there's 12 classes. There's one every single week. Um, so examples would be things like, obviously I already mentioned filming video with a smartphone, creating a video strategy, right? So once we get a little bit further into this, you're gonna have to have you know, topics, themes, you're gonna wanna know how to plan and script a video that's a little bit more complex. You're gonna wanna create a content calendar, right? So all of that is stuff that we cover throughout different trainings in the school. Um, we teach you how to enhance the videos you're making. So week one, you might be making a selfie video with a cell phone held up like this and, and do zero editing to it, right? But later into the training, you're going to learn how to add things to that video with just your phone. So I know we had some questions today about editing on a computer, which we also cover um, in the school. But we're even going to show you how to edit a lot of this stuff directly on your phone. So you don't have to uh, you know, put it on a computer and do anything else separately. So you can add graphics, you can trim the video, you can add music, you can do, I mean, honestly, the, the editing apps on the phone have gotten so much better in the past year you can do almost anything you can with a computer just directly through the phone. So we're gonna show you a lot of that kind of stuff, a lot of free resources, tips. Um, we're gonna show you how to do the same sort of stuff with live video. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with live now. Um, and then we're also gonna show you how to distribute the videos. So I think that's a missing component for a lot of agents right now is they make content, they post it somewhere one time and that's it, right? And they don't get enough attention on those videos. So we're also teaching on that kind of stuff. So where to post, uh, what to write with your posts, how to do some Facebook advertising, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so that gives you kind of a quick overview here. So we wanted to show you um, how to go learn more and get enrolled. Uh, what we decided- Nick, to Nick, if I can answer, sorry, I can say something real quick. I think one of the biggest appealing pieces for Tristan and I uh, is, is, is why we endorse and why, why we believe in this uh, individually is that uh, A, Video is is scary, scary as hell for all of us, uh, me included. And so being able to do it in a group setting and hold each other accountable while you're earning up, you know, the, 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 the uh, experience to, to do more video is powerful. So learning in a group setting, and this is all virtual. We didn't, this was always the plan to be virtual. It just, mm -hmm. you know, just obviously helped. Obviously the fact that we're in the, where we are now and with the world, with, the, with, with COVID, um, and so doing it that way, I think will help a lot of you to be able to shoot your videos, not post them to all of the world to see, but just for a group of maybe 50 people to see. And that way you can hold each other accountable. You can feel more comfortable, but it's easier to get uncomfortable in front of a smaller group. That's yeah. one of the reasons why we absolutely love this. Uh, and just as important, program. Jeff, uh, when Nick and his team were, were trying to figure out a price for this, we, we were going to, well, we suggested that they go, a lower and that's how we ended up at $97 not because there isn't value only because we wanted more people it, to be able to take uh, not, uh, this opportunity to grow they were going to price it somewhere in around $300 and I thought you know that's going to push out a lot of people that really need this right now and so this is why we talked to them and, and made this price available for LCA members so Nick, thanks for agreeing to drop it to that price for us. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. You guys, are, you guys are hard negotiators, you know? That's so good stuff. Uh, there's a question. Oh. How long will this training be? How does this work? Like, what is it two months, three months? 
So mm -hmm. the, uh, the training is three months. It's 12 weeks, right? So not exactly three months, depending on what month of the year we're in, but it's, it's 12 trainings in a row. Um, since we did this webinar at one o'clock on a Monday, we figured why not just have the class at one o'clock on Mondays because everybody was available this Monday for it. So, and th there's going to be more than one class. We're only opening one class to get started because um, we want to we want to kind of grow into this over time. And we're probably going to limit it to 50 people. We don't necessarily want a whole whole bunch of people in there because it can get kind of disorganized. So we got 50 seats open. It starts Monday at 1 p.m. Central, 11 p.m. Uh, you know Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern, depending where you are. You know, technically noon Mountain Time. Make sure we get them all covered right. Um, Is there a sign up fee for this, Nick? There's no sign up fee. No, I mean, so there's, there's two options in terms of payment. So if you go to bizvideoschool.com and then you click on one of the, the learn more or enroll buttons, it'll take you to the page where you can sign up. There's two options to pay. One is you pay $97 over three months, you know, each month for three months, right? Um, or you can pay for the whole thing up front, in which case you save 5%. So we're just giving you a little bit of an incentive to sign up and just pay for the whole thing. Um, I also, you know, when I sign up for stuff like this, I like doing that because then I know I'm just all in. I never have any question of like, oh, should I, you know, unenroll after four weeks or something? It keeps yourself accountable, obviously, but they're both there, right? So again, you know, as Tristan was saying, we wanted to make sure that we made this, you know, I, I got it, the price down kind of as, as far as we possibly could so that we can make it accessible to people. Um, but obviously we want you to, to be taking it seriously and, and stay committed to it. Um, because this is an accountability thing. And like Jeff said, I mean, this, you know, learning to do video is intimidating. So one other thing I wanted to mention um, is that you are more than welcome to enroll with your friends, right? So if you have somebody else who's going through this um, and they're going, yeah, you know, I, I've been thinking about trying video or I made a couple and I wasn't sure what to do with them and it kind of never went anywhere and you're feeling the same way and you're going, man, it'd be really cool if the two of us went through this experience together or maybe there's three of you or maybe there's a whole team um, and we'll talk about that in a second, but I really do think going through this with your actual peers, people that you know, like, and trust, that's going to help tremendously. So don't wait to enroll. We're going to give you a chance to invite your friends uh, at orientation, which will happen on Thursday. Um, but by all means, if you have, you know, some peers that you'd like to go through this with, you know, feel free to invite them. And then that was, you know, the, the thing I mentioned about the team, I did want to mention this as well, is that this is also available um, as a school that we can implement for a brokerage or a team. So if you have a team with, you know, with, let's say probably at least 10 people, you probably don't want to do it for teams that are too much smaller than that. Um, but if you got at least 10 people or if you get a brokerage with at least 10 people or more and you want to offer this through your office, you're going to be able to offer it to your agents and have a private group just for them. Just go ahead and shoot me a text. So th this is my direct line. Uh, we're not going to send you through any automations or anything, but if, if you are a team or a broker and you'd be interested in setting this up, you know, exclusively just for your group, right? So you would have your own private Facebook group that's labeled with your name. Um, only your members are allowed to be a part of it. Uh, we administer all of it for you. So you're not having to manage it all that much, although we do really encourage you to, to participate as well. Uh, but if you do have any interest in that, just go ahead and text the word broker to 636-541-7651. Uh, and like we said earlier, if you just want to take a, a, a picture of this slide really quickly while we have it up and send a text later, that's fine. Feel free to poke around the website and learn more about the school before you enroll. Um, one last thing I will mention is that every single unit is outlined on the website. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to see more detail about what is all included in the school, um, you can check that out on there. We've got a testimonial video. We've got a couple overview videos. So there's a ton, a ton of information there. And then if you do decide, yeah, this is something that we want to at least have a conversation with about doing for our team or our brokerage, just go ahead and text BROKER to 636-541-7651. So I want to go back to this other slide so people can still see the, uh, the uh, website there. Nick, if I can ask you some questions that are coming through, like for example, yeah, they're, they're asking questions about training them on content creation or they're talking more specifically about YouTube training um, and they want to know if it's included in this First, like this is more of a beginner's class. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. So what we're teaching on in this first kind of, you know, so really realistically this 12 weeks is kind of, it's your intro class, right? I mean, this is, the intention is by the end of this 12 weeks, you've made video a habit in your business. Now, in terms of where you would distribute that video, it could be anywhere. So we're not, we're not specific to one platform. So we're going to talk about YouTube. We're going to talk about Facebook, Instagram, um, we'll get a little bit into uh, Twitter or Snapchat, those kind of places. I'm sure Jeff will talk about TikTok. Um, 
but the truth is what we're really trying to teach you is to just start making video, right? So wherever you're comfortable is going to be where you put that content. So if you're somebody that spends a lot of time on YouTube and you subscribe to a lot of channels, we're going to help encourage you to put your stuff there. And we're going to teach you how to do that, right? If you're the person that has a big following on Facebook, then you're going to focus there first. So does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like the advanced classes, because here's the thing. So this Geraldine is asking these questions like, is, is, what if I wanted to register just for a straight to an advanced class? I think what's going to come out of this is that there's going to be a lot of other things that come from it, like one-on-one -on -one coaching potentially, or right. obviously somebody asked the question earlier is like, how long does this last? Well, this is going to be as perpetual as you want it to be. So mm -hmm. we're going to constantly be evolving the, the curriculum. Uh, so if you get into it and you spend three months and you've learned all you need to learn and you, you're ready to go, go. Uh, but if you feel like, okay, there's a lot more that I need to learn. I want to stay tied to the hip with these guys because they obviously are next level on what they're teaching. Well, then you might stay in there. Uh, so it's really, it's going to be up to each individual uh, person. But as far as uh, registering for an advanced class now, Nick, I don't think there's an option to do that yet. Correct? Yeah, we don't have an advanced class uh, for sale today. Um, I will say if you're the, I mean, if you're the kind of person that's kind of towards Jeff's level where you're like cranking out videos on a consistent basis, then you, you probably wouldn't get nearly as much value out of this intro class. But I will tell you that like, I've even learned stuff putting this class together. I mean, there are, there are things. So, you know, I always joke uh, the very first class, the first thing we teach people is where to find the camera button on their phone. Right. So like, that sounds ridiculous. And everybody usually kind of laughs and chuckles at that step. And then within four slides, we're usually talking about something that, that almost, you know, within that time, almost everybody in the class has, has learned something already, right? So there, there are just so many parts to making video that you probably just don't realize you've never thought about, you know? Um, so even things like, you know, the frame rate, the, uh, you know, the resolution stuff we've kind of briefly covered over, uh, over here today, um, learning how to add, you know, certain graphics. I mean, one thing we cover is like, uh, Facebook Live, uh, a lot of people don't realize there's a way to create a frame and add your logo to the video that you can open and you can go live with your logo there directly through Facebook. So just little things like that. So, you know, I wouldn't be reluctant to sign up if you're somebody that's maybe done a handful of videos and you'll actually see on our, on our website, we have um, a client or sorry, a customer of ours who talks about how she was really comfortable getting in front of the camera. So that wasn't her problem and she made lots of one-off videos but there was a lot of specifics in terms of editing and improving the quality of her videos that she hadn't even really thought about. So by joining, you know, she learned a lot about, you know, the, the control of the audio and having a lapel microphone and making sure your lighting all looks good. So, yeah, I mean, I, I will say if you're, if you're a total expert, if you're somebody has been doing this or you're looking for something more advanced, you, you don't necessarily need to be signed up right now because we will be building that out over time. Um, but if you're anything kind of any step before that point in time, this is probably a perfect fit for you. So especially if you're a total newbie or if you've only made, you know, five or 10 videos over the past year or two. And you know what else we've realized through this uh, webinar today, which we've gone well past an hour, is that there's a lot of questions about video. And so we are right. going to be doing continual webinars in LCA, right, Tristan? Uh, maybe, maybe twice a month. And what we can do is, is we can make each webinar very micro on, on a specific topic. And right. so that way, you know, going in, hey, we're going to specifically talk about tripods and stabilizers today. We're going to specifically talk yeah. about editing right. apps. This so, was very generalized. You're right, man. That was, that was true. But it's hard, it's hard to cover all things video in one hour. It's impossible. We even missed some of the, the great slides. So we'll, we'll definitely have, we'll definitely do this over right. and uh, maybe focus on a different part of, of this thing. So yeah, good, good job, guys. Anything you guys yeah. want to add? Uh, Nick, last call to action one more time. Yeah, well, I mean, bottom line is, you know, if you're somebody out there that's thinking, I need to be doing more video, or I want to get into using video, or I want to learn, you know, I just want to get started, or I just want to keep myself accountable. I mean, that's who this is for, you know, so we want we want people that are looking for, you know, accountability partner that are gonna, you know, and, and to be honest, I'll challenge you a little bit too. like, I don't want you to sign up for this, and then not take it seriously. You know, I do want people that are going to be engaging and participating because a lot of what makes this effective and fun is that the people who are part of it are, are taking it seriously, right? And they're having fun with it and posting. Um, there is a little bit of vulnerability too, right? I mean, you're gonna be sharing your content in a very safe environment with other people going through the same process. So it is pretty ideal, but you do have to be a little vulnerable and put yourself out there. Um, the final thing I will say is just, you know, if, if this hasn't kind of sunk in at this point, I mean, video is it's just a shift in how we communicate with each other, okay? 
It's not a temporary trend. It's not just a marketing tool. It is an enormous thing. It's gonna completely change the day-to-day -day interactions that we have with each other. And especially because of what's happened over the past month or two, you know, it's happening now. I mean, this is something that was gradually transitioning. And then right now it's accelerating by several years, in my opinion. I mean, this is something that, you know, lots and lots of people, regardless of whether or not they enroll in a school or whatever it is, like they're going to start trying some stuff. And so it's really important to start taking some chances and, and be a little bit vulnerable, be willing to take some risk um, and do something to kind of challenge yourself. So, you know, final point is just, you know, go to bizvideoschool.com. You're going to see more of what's in the school. You're going to see a testimonial. You're going to see some great information on there. We're going to continue adding things to that website. Um, we'll add some case studies eventually, all of that. But if you do want to get started on this right now, I would get signed up immediately because we are starting in just one week. We're going to do the orientation for this on Thursday, and we really are trying to limit it to just 50 people. So we want to make sure that you get your seat reserved before it fills up. There will be upcoming classes to join, uh, but obviously everybody that participates in this first one is going to be that much further ahead, is going to be putting out Nick, content before anybody else does. And so one Nick, final time. promo code, right? Just, you just go in and you get the discount? Because yeah, there's no, there's no uh, limits. I mean, we set it up because this really is only being announced to LCA today because we want to make this kind of exclusive for LCA members. So you don't have to put in any codes or anything. You, the only choice you have to make is do you just want to pay for all of it up front and save 5% or do you want to pay 97 bucks a month for three months and you can do either one of those on the site. Um, uh, if you they, do have any uh, problems, any questions, anything like that, um, there is a contact us page on there as well. Um, or you can, you know, I, I did show my, I technically showed my cell phone number, which is here on the very last slide. Um, so if you text that number with any questions, if you have any trouble, uh, I could be, I could respond to you as well. And if anybody has any questions uh, from me as well, I, anytime anybody who knows me is from my speaking engagements, you're always welcome to DM me. I always respond. Sometimes it might take a day, but I'll always get back to you and help you with your uh, video questions. So feel free to do that on any of the social platforms. Very cool. All right, well, thank you for being on again. This is being recorded. So once the recording is done, it'll go onto the lab code agents, YouTube page, and we'll post it up there. We'll also do our best to email it to everybody that was on this. So just make sure to go onto Lab Code Agents YouTube page, subscribe. We put up the link before. And, and then if you did text that information to Nick, he's going to get back to you with all of the links and he'll sign you up for those video tips as well. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you being on and uh, let's look forward to the next one, man. I'm already... I'm already trying to think of what else we can cover the next time. I love it. Ah, which topic? Right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you all for being on today. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you, everybody.